Uh, I would like to welcome you that uh, whatever you are tuned in in this uh, late night presentation, that um, our Heavenly Father may bless you. And uh, today we are looking at um, the issue of uh, the Sunday law agitations. May we pray as uh, we enter into learning this uh, very hour. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us. We want to know the times that we are living in. And Lord, we want to praise your name because you have not hidden these things, but uh, you have written us a love letter through your word that uh, we may be able to read and seek Christ that we may be purified, that the times may not get us unawares. And so thank you for what you are going to learn. Take charge and control of these people equipment and talk through my lips. This is my request in Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I believe that uh, the Lord is doing everything that uh, he can do to make sure that uh, we are ready to be saved in his kingdom and none will have uh, an excuse that um, they never had a chance to know what is truth. And so we can see the reality of uh, the prophecies of the Bible happening around us. And uh, what we are praying is that uh, the Lord may give us an eyesal that we may understand what is he really speaking to us. And uh, in this session, I'd like to point out something in the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, in uh, Psalms 119, verse 126, the Bible says, It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. And as we speak, we are seeing that every human law and every um, divine law is being done away with humanity. People are following after their own vain imaginations. The things that the Lord have said that they should not be done are the very things that people are doing. It is like a, a deliberate defiance against the kingdom or against the government of God. And so we can be sure that um, as the Lord says that he will not strive with man forever, Yes, indeed, he gave a time period in Genesis chapter 6. And when the time allotted to humanity reached, the earth was destroyed. He didn't go on striving with Sodom and Gomorrah forever. They reached their limit and they were no more. And we can be sure that uh, these things were written for us, of whom the ends of the world have come, that we may learn from them and uh, we may not be left in doubt to what actually uh, the Lord is speaking to us. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verses 10, we are told that uh, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Now, we ask ourselves, who is the person who is wise then that uh, will be able to understand these things? Who is this wise person that understands the things that shall be able to happen? In the book of Job 28, verses um, 28, if I'm not, uh, the book of Job 28, 28, we read, and Unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. So we are being told that the wise shall understand. What makes you to be wise? It is the fear of the Lord. And to depart from the evil is understanding. So a person who is fearing the Lord shall be wise. And a person who shall depart from evil shall understand. So 
those who practice the fear of the Lord and they purify their souls and remedy the defect in their characters shall be able to understand what the Lord is speaking to his church at such a time as this. There is a steady trend of events as they are recorded in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and the book of Revelation chapter 13. And we are nearing that time where the mark of the beast shall be enforced. And we are seeing these agitations daily in the newspapers, on the television, in the news. And those who place themselves under uh, God's control to be led and guided by him will catch the steady trade of the events ordained by him to take place. Nothing shall uh, get the children of God unaware. And uh, when you look in the news and even you go to the social medias, these are some of the kind of the things you find. And um, this is from Fox uh, News. Should all stores close on Sunday to allow staff a day off to recuperate? And you can see there, should all stores close? Sorry, we are closed. And uh, these are the kind of news that you get. We don't interpret uh, prophecies because of what is in the daily newspapers, but we look at the trends that are happening around the whole world and what is written in the Bible, and we can understand that something is really happening. Um, and uh, in uh, when we back, go back into the history of the Sunday laws, there was uh, Sunday laws back in the days of Constantine. There are the the, the the Sunday laws in 1880, the late 1880s, and then uh, we have the Sunday laws of uh, Toronto in 1911, where there was no labor, there was no business, there was no games, there was no transportation, no advertising, no gambling, no using of profane language, no public meeting except uh, uh, churches. And so these things are coming to us. Uh, and uh, we see from uh, 2015, 2019, and then 2022, uh, when the leaders saw the catastrophes that are happening around the world, they, they, they started thinking about, is there, any, is there anything that can be done about the environmental uh, issues? And um, one of the suggestions, and you find that in uh, Laudato C, uh, on the care of our, our common home, saying that um, let the other, let the mother earth have a day of uh, recuperating, and let that day be a day of families coming together, family reunions, so that um, the environment may uh, heal itself. And so, when we look at uh, the statistics that uh, uh, we have on the issue of the Sundays, increasing alarm toward climate change. Percentage of US adults who reported feeling each emotion toward climate change by year surveyed. And um, we can see the alarm uh, going high and high. And uh, these are the agitations. These are the things that people are looking into. And they say, the, the earth cannot continue like this. At least uh, let us, uh, come back to God. And you know how it works. That um, uh, what we have is that um, the morals must go down, the, uh, the social, eco economical status must go down, and, and then we will have um, uh, a cry that we should go back to God. And then uh, there is the legislation of uh, rules to bring us back to God which the people who are doing this, you will find that they are innocent people. They even don't know what is happening. Some are so ignorant, but um, they are being misled by the people who know better. And those who should be sounding an alarm, they are not sounding it. And so uh, in the book, Great Controversy, page uh, 589, 
we are told that Satan while appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. And uh, even now he is at work in accidents and calamities by sea and by the land in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves and earthquakes in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. And what will he do? He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. But uh, these things have been uh, prophesied in the book of Matthew chapter 24 to, to precede the birth pains of uh, the coming crisis. When you go to the book of Matthew chapter 24, the book of Matthew chapter 24, um, Matthew chapter 24, The, the Lord records from um, as uh, he was just passing the temple and uh, the, um, the disciples asked him to come and look at the magnificent uh, 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 building that was there. Jesus Christ tells them that there shall be no stone left upon the other. But then they went ahead and asked him, what shall be the signs of the end of the time and the coming of the Son of Man? And uh, Jesus told them that... Uh, for many, verse 5, Matthew 24, verse 5, for many, I, I'll just start from verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And this and all these are the beginning of sorrow. So we can be sure that... Um, we are at that point that uh, we are seeing the beginning of sorrows and the end uh, I shall come or shall follow after. The pretext is that a reason is given in justification of course of action that is not the real zero reason. And uh, the people will ask for a solution that really is not a solution. And so the Sunday, movement we are told in review and herald december 11 1888 that the sunday movement is now making its way in darkness the leaders are concealing the true issue and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is uh tending they they, they speak as if that um they they want to bring a solution to the world when they want to plunge the world in another rebellion against god uh, we should bring before them the real question at issue, thus interposing the most effectual protest against measures to restrict liberty of conscience. Christians should be arising uh, about these matters, and they should become vocal and tell the people what is happening. As we have read in Psalms 119, verses 126, they have made void uh, the law of God, and soon the Lord will act. But people think that... Uh, there is just uh, a climate change on its own. And yes, we have a true climate change. You can check that in the book of uh, Genesis chapter three. When sin reaches its peak, we have a climate change and we have really a climate change. When Eve uh, deceived or uh, uh, what can I say, moved over the husband and prevailed, yes, prevailed uh, upon the husband to take of the forbidden fruit, of forbidden fruit, we see that there was a climate change. For the first time, a leaf fell from the tree, something that had never happened in the life of Adam and Eve. There was a climate change, a real climate change, not a false climate change. And then when... Um, in Genesis chapter 7, when men refused to build the ark and refused to 
heed to the voice of the Lord. We had a climate change, a real climate change, and the whole world was swept away by the flood. When Jesus came to visit Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angels came to warn Lot about what was going to happen, there was a real climate change that uh, the, the earth was swallowed up with the brimstone, the, the fires were able to raise down Sodom and Gomorrah. And so there are real climate change that are brought out by the abundance of sin. And um, instead of going against the law of God to establish a solution for these things, we should be facing the real issue that is before us. And that is the prevailing of iniquity and the making void of the law of God, which brings about these things. In the book of Revelation, chapter, uh, chapter 11, and uh, in as much as there is um, a real climate change, also we cannot uh, be naive that uh, there is official climate change that people uh, also, as the Bible speaks about natural climate change, also it speaks about artificial climate change which is caused about by people to further on their own agenda. And in Revelation chapter 11, it reveals about this artificial climate change. In Revelation chapter 11, uh, verses uh, 18, the last portion of it, Revelation 11, 18, and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the day that they should be judged and that thou, shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. So there are people who are involved in artificial climate change on this world. You talk about uh, um, geotagging and you talk about uh, Tesla instruments and uh, you talk about this heating of the ion sphere so that uh, they may uh, really mess up uh, with the uh, weather patterns. These are artificial uh, things. And while we are looking in the wrong direction, while the world is looking in the wrong direction, the children of God need to arise and look in the right direction and be able to tell the world, this is the real issue and not what you are thinking. And so uh, we are coming to a place where men will try to do what they think instead of consulting God uh, to see what should be done. And then uh, they, they, they cause a problem and think that they can bring about a solution when actually uh, uh, is, uh, when actually what they are causing is more problem. In uh, Laudato Si, about, uh, bring about this Sunday um, sacredness, uh, we read this. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has been, has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality. It also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. That is uh, Laudato Si, connecting pagan earth worship to fascism, to environmentalism, and Sunday sacredness. You, you can see the tone of uh, the representative of the pagan uh, uh, or uh, this uh, apostate religion um, um, that uh, defies the government of God in Revelation chapter 13. And uh, everything uh, that has been prophesied, we see it coming to fruition. And uh, the Green Sabbath project was uh, also founded in 2019 by the, uh, the, the man called uh, Jonathan uh, Skosh, founder and director of the Jewish uh, activism summer school in Berlin and a professor of Jewish religious and intellectual history at um, University at uh, Postda. And uh, the Green Sabbath uh, project is um, to try to let the earth heal herself by um, abs 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 
abstaining from every emissions, whether it be from factories, whether it be from uh, uh, automobiles, whichever thing that actually um, emits uh, smoke in or taint into the air, uh, there, there should be a day where uh, wherein all these things are stopped and the art just rests completely from uh, being tended by these things. And so um, listen to what um, Green, uh, the, 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 the Green Sabbath project uh, 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 founder, Jonathan Skosh had to say, for clergy and uh, spiritual leaders, make ecology the center of Sabbath in your community. Preach and teach about the sacred imperative to protect our environment. This is uh, the this is uh, what we are calling the uh, Green Sabbath project, and he is appealing to religious. So environmental issues have been turned into religious issues. Since when did the environmental issues be turned into religious issues? And they are not afraid to voice their concern. My, my concern is, um, why is the church so silent about this? Why does it, doesn't it preach the truth on what is happening? If only we can preach the truth about what is happening in this world, our adventure we will be able to uh, 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 reach some people. And then uh, uh, some news that uh, uh, the world needs climate Sundays and wild Christian more than ever. The, the world is already crying it as, as in June 2021, the world was crying for uh, a Sunday Sabbath rest. Um, And uh, I'd like just to bring this on the screen too. We are looking at the issue, the Sunday law agitations. Um, Sunday rest, TikTok's latest wellness trend can help you have a productive week. Sundays are typically associated with the day of rest, but the latest TikTok wellness trend has turned the last day of the week into a relaxing reset routine. With over 437 million views, the Sunday rest has become a regular occurrence in the lives of Gen Z and millennials who post how they spend their Sunday, such as cleaning, washing up, doing the laundry in order to prepare for the week ahead. To make their videos even more pleasing to watch, people seamlessly edit their videos so that their cleaning efforts have smooth transitions. And uh, so you are seeing even now, uh, 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 this is becoming a great issue before us. And uh, one David Roger Clawson says, as we give time to ourselves for a Sabbath and sabbatical to build our resilience, we can also give time to our planet for regeneration, rejuvenation, recovery, and resilience. This is uh, by uh, David Roger Clawson. Again, uh, this is one which is interesting. Even the big uh, business, the business giants of the world. This is uh, Amazon Prime's on Sunday, Work Dilemma. With two delivery drivers swing over schedules, Sabbatarian Christians find their observance increasingly countercultural in a 24-7 economy. And so you can see that um, the Sabbath keepers are getting uh, the pressure even in working in these companies which do not uh, recognize the seventh day of the week uh, as um, a sabbath uh, of uh, the lord and so everyone is asking could sabbath closure law make a comeback and uh, we have seen this in the trials of uh, the uh, pandemic that uh, is coming to a name that is uh, the CV-19. And uh, the news outlet in Austria, in Austria, several large retail chains are considering closing their stores on Sunday to save on their energy bill. The Sunday Alliance welcomes this development. And so this, these are just the agitations uh, that we are 
uh, really seeing happen uh, before us. And uh, also on this uh, green, the, the climate justice movement, uh, I'll read you something on the climate justice movement. We are told over the weekend of November 12 to 13, few official discussions or activities are planned at uh, COP27. This provides a major moment when the attention of media and participants can be turned to interreligious climate messaging and transformative vision. On Sunday, November 13th, religious leaders will return to Mount Sinai, a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and others. It is a site for turning to God and receiving God's message. We return to Sinai in a movement of repentance and quest. We seek a new vision for humanity and it is endangered existence. And we seek to receive and amplify a message of life-sustaining living and habits that humanity needs to hear today. In this spirit, the project partners will bring together premier religious leaders from the world's major religions to gather upon Mount Sinai to engage in a first ever climate repentance ceremony and to put forth a prophetic interreligious call to action, climate justice, 10 universal commandments. And uh, I, I think this is a mock of God. This is to make a mockery of uh, what God did at Mount Sinai. And so they go there at Mount Sinai where the, where the 10 commandments were given, but where are, why are they going there? Not to seek the Lord in prayer that he may make the world understand the seventh day Sabbath, and people turn away from sin, but they are going there for a climate change to find another day of rest so that the earth may heal herself. Sister White in uh, The Great Controversy, page uh, 589, she says, and uh, I quote, the leaders of the Sunday movement may advocate reforms which the people need, principles which are in harmony with the Bible, yet while there is with this, a requirement which is contrary to God's law, his servants cannot unite with them. And we saw that uh, these people were meeting, they were doing an interreligious uh, ecumenical uh, gathering to do what? To uh, be able to talk about the climate change and giving the other day of rest so that she may heal herself. Um, and so, we are told that uh, we don't have uh, uh, we don't have um, we don't have to rejoin with these people who are making these laws. Sad to say that uh, our own people are buying into this thing so that uh, they may join in it. In Advent in Advent Messenger, we read that even our own are being really. Uh, deceived into joining these movements for this. I don't know if they know what they are doing or if they don't know what they are doing. Adra's statement on the conference of the parties of the UNFCCC COP27, COP, uh, the Advent Development and Relief Agency, a humanitarian and development practitioner, has seen firsthand how the global equilibrium is out of order. We aim to do our deed Offices in our network have started to move toward net zero, signed the climate charter, shared our knowledge at the COP26 and COP27, and published the Comprehensive Carbon Reduction Guide in 2021. We again told ADRA calls on policymakers and influential personalities to take necessary decisions in the upcoming UN Climate Conference. Now, look what we are told that. Um, the leaders of the Sunday movement may advocate reforms which the people need, principles which are in harmony with the Bible. Yet while there is with this a requirement which is contrary to God's law, yet while there is with this a requirement which is contrary to God's law, his servants cannot unite with them. So what does Adra has to do with the climate charter which calls for Sunday as a day of rest? You, you can answer yourself. The, Industrialized countries as the historical perpetrators of the climate crisis, 
must finally step up to promise, says Med. The COP26 has set some course, but more steps are needed, such as stronger consideration of civil society actors, more focus on loss and damage, and meeting the pledge on global adap adaptation uh, financing. Uh, continued on, we are, we are told, ADRA, Europe hopes that these points will find strong consideration in the upcoming policy talks and wishes participants a successful and fruitful COP27. What happened to the instruction that we don't have to join these people who are going to um, bring about resolutions that uh, really will um, clash with uh, our faith? And uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16, the Lord tells us by, be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. As we are living in this world, um, we should understand how Satan is working. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Let us be as wise as serpents and as calm as doves. In fact, um, there's a statement I haven't put in my slide, but uh, I'll just read it in the book of Great Controversy, page 588, uh, paragraph three. We, we are not really naive of uh, how the devil is um, working. That is a Great Controversy 588.2. As spiritualism more closely imitates the nominal Christianity of the day, it has greater power to deceive and ensnare. Saturn himself is converted after the modern order of things. He will appear in the character of an angel of light. Though, no, through the agency of spiritualism, miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and many undeniable wonders will be performed. And as the spirits will profess faith in the Bible and manifest respect for the institutions of the church, their work will be accepted as a manifestation of divine power. But we know that um, these seemingly good uh, uh, resolutions they are making, it is certain turned into an angel of light, which is not the truth at all. And so spiritualism, the foundation of spiritualism is uh, uh, at war with the, the, the direct statements of the word of God. When the word of God says this, Spiritualism will tell you it says like this, and uh, spiritualism is at war with um, the very principles of the word of, of God. It's not just only in the immortality of the soul that uh, we get the issues of spiritualism, but um, also in uh, direct contradiction with uh, what um, the word of God um, is saying. So let us be careful. We are told that. Uh, the spirit has to guide us in all truth, and the spirit will never be a conrad to the reveal of the word of God. We are told that uh, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, um, uh, the, if they do not speak according to this word, there is no truth in them. Now, in uh, Testimonies to the Church, volume 6, page 18, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 18. The light we have received upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood, nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. Now, Daniel is standing in his place as we speak right now, and more truth is shining upon the word of God, and none need to be deceived on the issues at stake. None needs to be received at the issues that are at stake. The Sunday law is making its inroad to the world unaware and soon and very soon, the people of this world will accept something that will plunge this world in a more uh, uh, um, chaotic situation than bring a solution. In Revelation chapter 13, what 
are we really headed to? We are told in Revelation chapter 13, verses 12, that uh, the scenario is that, and he exercises all the power of the first beat before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And so we find that uh, those who will not um, really uh, accept this false religion will be marked name. But uh, what are we told again that... Um, Uh, we are told in um, we were warned in uh, signs of the time page signs of the time May 6 1897 paragraph 16 signs of the time May 6 1897 paragraph 16 that uh, Trial and persecution will come to all who, in obedience to the word of God, refuse to worship this false Sabbath. Force is the last resort of every false religion. At first, it tries attraction. We are seeing the agitation of climate change, environmental protection, and all this stuff leading us into Sunday worship. There are attractions of the Sunday law, of the mark of the beast. First of all, attraction then the second phase, persecution. So I, I repeat again, trial and persecution will come to all who, in obedience to the word of God, refuse to worship this false Sabbath. Force is the last resort of every false religion. At first, it tries attraction, as the king of Babylon tried the power of music and outward show. If these attractions invented by men inspired by Satan failed to make men worship the image, the hungry flames of the furnace were ready to consume them. So it will be now. The papacy has exercised her power to compel men to obey her, and she will continue to do so. We need the same spirit that was manifested by God's servants in the conflict with paganism, giving an account of the treatment of the Christians by the emperor of Rome. Tertullian says, we are thrown to the wild beasts to make us recant. We are burned in the flames. We are condemned to prisons and to mines. We are banished to islands such as Patmos and all have failed. So it was in the case of the three Hebrew artists, their eye was single to the glory of God. Their souls were steadfast. The power of the truth held them firmly to their allegiance to God. It is in the power of God alone that we shall be enabled to be loyal to him. Nothing will make us go through this crisis. Some people think that um, oh, preparing for food and hiding it uh, 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 somewhere, going to the remotest places where no one can reach is uh, the solution for all these things. No, we are told that our solution is surrendering our heart to God. And then we leave the rest with God. And even if they have these uh, all instruments for searching for you wherever you are, God is able to disable those uh, instruments. And if they want to poison you, we have been promised in the book of Mark that some shall drink poison and it shall not affect them. Some shall uh, 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 um, uh, face severe test, but the Lord shall be able to make them go through. And so my, uh, my encouragement uh, this late night is this. We are living in the time of the mark of the beast in principle. It is time that we sought the Lord. It is the time the wise uh, may understand what is happening. And what does it mean to be wise once again? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and they that hate the evil, that is the understanding. And so we shouldn't be held in bondage and in captive. We shouldn't be found sleeping as it were right now. And so while men are sleeping, Satan is actively arranging 
matter so that the Lord's people may not have mercy or justice. And uh, uh, I think uh, we have another point somewhere. Uh, by this um, sleeping, uh, by this sleeping uh, of the disciples, the Son of Man went to pray. I think this should be in Testimonies, Volume 2. He found them uh, sleeping. Uh, I'll try to find that uh, and be able to. The quote has uh, just. Uh, escape my mind that um, in this sleeping is uh, a representation of the church when to be found when to be found sleeping is perilous and so we should be wide awake of uh, what is happening around us because we have been told in the book of uh, Mark chapter 13, verse 35 and 36 that we should watch lest we be found sleeping, uh, lest we be found sleeping. In uh, Testimonies to the Church, volume two, page 205, paragraph one. Testimonies to the Church, volume two, page 205, paragraph one. The son of God went away the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, they will be, they will be done. And again he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy. By this sleeping disciples is represented a sleeping church when the day of God's visitation is nigh. It is a time of clouds and thick darkness when to be found asleep is most perilous and so it is not time to sleep we have the agitation before us it is sunday law movement and uh, it is professions are mild and apparently christian but when it shall speak it will reveal the spirit of the dragon revealed and herald december 11 1888 right now it may seem so innocent as we look at it but um, at the end it will um, find many uh, of us not prepared. Lastly, I want you to see this. Far be it that uh, when this thing breaks upon us, we can be numbered in such a class. Far be it that we be numbered upon this class. As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message but have not been sanctified through it abandon their position and take refuge under the banner of the powers of darkness. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy popular side. I pray that um, as we see the clouds thickening around us, that uh, we shall seek the full arm of God to be clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ so that we may stand and remain standing, that nothing may move us. Otherwise, may we seek the Lord as never before. In 1840s, when the midnight cry was announced um, uh, in Matthew chapter 25, uh, we are told that these people trimmed their lamp. And what does it mean to trim the lamp? It was to study the word with great intensity that had never been. Yes, we can look at the inroads of the papacy. We can look at the uh, LGBTQ movement. We can look at the, uh, the Green Sabbath uh, project and uh, the climate change movement. But um, even if we get all the information of what they are doing, and then we don't have Christ within the hope of glory, it will amount to nothing. It will just be like having uh, information which is not prof profitable unto us. My urge and my request this time is that um, uh, as we see all these things approaching, 
as we see the darkness thickening around us, we are told that let our light shine so bright. It is in the times of great darkness that, that the stars shine more brighter. I pray that we may be the stars in this time of darkness so that the Lord may use us to shine even more brighter. May the Lord bless us and shall we close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, glory and honor be unto thee, thanksgiving and honor. We give you praise for all the things that you do for us and you are preparing your last army to sound the loud cry. May we not be found sleeping at our watch. May we not be found sleeping at the Zion's wall but uh, we may be found awake, ready to be used by thee. Help us to be used of the Holy Spirit rather than to use the Holy Spirit, devising our own way, but to surrender our will unto thy will, that the mind that was in Christ may be in us, to crucify self and flesh, that uh, our mind may be clear to hear the voice of thy Spirit. Thank you for all that you are doing for us, and help us as you work for our salvation to work for others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless us until next uh, time that uh, we shall meet. God be with you.